Alright, next in the sidebar we have components. This section allows you to create subgroups of your issues. It's just a custom text field. But in practice we can use components to group tickets that relate to one module or functionality of our product. For example, login screen, in-app purchases, database and so on. Also you can automate some processes with these components like assigning a responsible person. It's also a way to point to the subject matter expert of this module. For example, the primary use case is that you can fill out the component field and then the ticket is automatically assigned to a tag or a group lead. And this person, this tag lead, reassigns these tickets to other team members in their sub-team based on their knowledge. It's a basic delegation routine that saves lots of time in the long term and removes you as a bottleneck. And now with all this knowledge we can return to the reports section. So here you can find some built-in reports. Some of them will use just one field and show you some kind of chart. Other reports will require a saved filter based on your query. These reports can give you the necessary insights to make correct decisions about your project. But unfortunately there is no universal piece of advice here. You must play with these reports to understand what you can present to your project stakeholders. The only recommendation here is to actually use these reports and Jira dashboards. You should avoid manually extracting data from Jira to provide a high-level progress report as much as possible. Let's move on. Here we have the development section of the sidebar. In the code section you can link Jira to your code repository. And after you connect those you will see all pull requests here. Moreover, your Jira issues will have an additional link leading to the corresponding pull request in the repository. 